Okay, in today's video, we're going to go over a complete problem involving charged particles in electric fields. But before we get started, please don't forget to support our channel, Step by Step Science. Please subscribe to our channel. In addition, we have made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials where you can find our Teachers Pay Teachers store. The link is in the description below. And this is what we're going to be doing in this video. We are going to go over a full problem where we are going to take this charged particle, which is here against this negatively charged plate, this negative particle, we're going to release it. It's going to move across here, it's going to move across here, and it's going to hit this screen here. And we're going to go through, first, kind of a, a qualitative explanation about how it does that and what happens, and then we're going to go through and do all the calculations for this acceleration voltage, all this acceleration for this deflection voltage, and everything that happens in here in Section 3. Okay, here in Section 1, we have an acceleration voltage. We have a positively charged plate, we have a negatively charged plate. When you have parallel plates, you have an electric field. The electric field flows from the positive to the negative plate. That particle, because it's negative and negative, it is going to be released from here and it's going to fly right across here through that gap that we made there. Now, why does it do that? It does that because that particle has feels a force from the electric field, a horizontal force. In the x direction, we have the electric force. In the y direction, we have no force. So that particle feels a constant acceleration in the x direction. It moves right across there. Now, once it gets here, there's nothing here, so it just flies straight through. So we'll go like that. Then it's going to reach this deflection voltage, this deflection capacitor, and there's a positive plate and negative plate, electric field. That particle, when it flies through there, it's going to feel a force from the electric field, and that force is going to act in the upward direction. So that particle is going to then have a parabolic path as it is attracted to this negative plate and moves in the direction opposite of that electric field. And in this case, there's no forces in the x direction, but there's a constant force in the electric, an electric force in the y direction. So that particle in section 2 here is going to have a constant acceleration in the y direction. Now here there's nothing in the sense that there's no electric field. So then the particle just travels in a straight line after it leaves that deflection voltage. And there, there's no forces acting on it. There's no forces acting on it. It just has constant velocity. So that's what that particle does, and that's how it gets from here to the screen. Okay, now for each section, 1, 2, and 3, we're going to go through all of the calculations. Here in section 1, we have the uh, acceleration voltage. The distance between the plates is 4 centimeters. The voltage difference between the two plates is 200 volts. Particle flies through there because of that electric force. We're going to calculate the field strength between the plates, the force on the electron, the acceleration of the electron, the speed when it leaves the acceleration voltage. We're going to take the amount of time it takes for it to go through that acceleration voltage and the kinetic energy that it has when it passes through that gap. All right, let's get started with number one. We want to calculate the electric field strength between the plates. Well, we can use this equation to calculate the electric field strength. The electric field strength comes from that the voltage between the plates is equal to the electric field strength times the distance. We can use that equation for parallel plates. The electric field strength is therefore going to be the voltage divided by the difference, excuse me, the difference, by the distance. Plug the numbers in, 200 volts, 0 0.04 meters. You've got to convert to meters and you get that that electric field strength is 5,000 volt meters, volts per meter. Okay, not volt meters, volts per meter. That's the electric field strength between those plates. Now, we're going to calculate the force. The force is going to come from the fact that we know the definition of the electric field. The definition of the electric field is the force per unit of charge. Newtons per coulomb, that's the definition of the electric field. We're going to rearrange that for the force. The force is Q times E, charge times the electric field strength. The charge is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Electric field is 5,000 volt meters, and we get 8.0 times 10 to the minus 16 newtons. That's the force that that electron feels, that constant force between those plates. Now we can get the acceleration of the particle. The acceleration comes from Newton's second law. Acceleration is equal to the force, which we just calculated, divided by the mass. The force we just calculated, 8 times 10 to the minus 16. Now, I didn't give you the mass, but you can look that up. This is the mass of the electron, 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. 
And therefore, we get that the acceleration is 8.79 times 10 to the 14 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration of that electron. Okay, now we're going to get the speed when it leaves that voltage, when it le passes through this gap. The speed, we're going to use one of the four kinematic equations. Vi uh, the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared times 2 times the acceleration times the change in the distance. Now, we know when we hold the particle here and release it, the initial velocity is going to be 0. So this term is 0. And then we have to take the square root of both sides, and we get that the final velocity, because this is final velocity squared, is the square root of 2 times a times delta x. 2 is 2. A is the acceleration we calculated earlier. The distance is 0.04 meters. I gave that to you over here. That's centimeters, and that's converted into meters. And then we get that the final velocity is 8.39 times 10 to the 6th meters per second. That's the velocity when it passes through that gap. Okay, now we're going to get the time. The time we're going to again use one of the kinematic equations, this equation delta x, which is 0 0.04, initial velocity times the time, the initial velocity is 0, 1 half at squared, acceleration times the time squared. We want to solve for the time, so we're going to multiply by 2, both sides. We get 2 delta x. Then we're going to divide by a, divide by a. Then we're going to take the square root. We get t equals the square root of 2 delta x divided by a. Time is going to be 2 times 0 0.04 times divided by the acceleration we had earlier, and that gives us the time it takes for that particle to cra travel across those 4 centimeters is 9.54 times 10 to the minus 9 seconds. Okay. Now we're going to do the kinetic energy. We're going to do the kinetic energy two different ways. Kinetic energy is, of course, you might remember 1 half mv squared. We know the mass. We know the velocity. Therefore, we have 1 half. This is the mass. This is the velocity we calculated. And the kinetic energy is 3.2 times 10 to the minus 17 joules. Now, there's another way we can calculate the kinetic energy using a little bit more of a energy conservation of energy prop, uh, principle. Okay, we should get the same number. So we're going to calculate it again, except we're going to use this equation or this relationship that the kinetic energy that it has is equal to the amount of work that was done to get it over there in the first place, or the amount of work done by the electric field. The amount of work is the force. This is the force, Q times E, times the distance. And it's also equal to, because ED is voltage, Q times the change in the voltage. Now, we're going to use this section of this equation all right, and we get that it's Q, which is the charge on the electron, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. I don't know if we used that already, but you can look that up also. Okay, and then the voltage, the electric field is 5,000 volt meters. We calculated that first, and this is the distance, and we get once again that 3.2 times 10 to the minus 17 joules. The same answer we got on the previous slide. Amazing how that works out. Okay, I think that's it for the first part. Now, in part two of the video, we're going to go through all of our calculations for section two here when the electron moved through the deflection voltage. So we're going to talk about what the initial velocity is in the x direction and the y direction. We're going to get the distance between the plates because you can see here I gave you the electric field strength, 6,250 volts per meter. The voltage between the plates is 5,000 volts, and the length of the plates, which is the length this way, is 5 centimeters, and we want to know the distance across the plates like that. Okay, and then we're going to get the acceleration in the y direction. Then we're going to get how far the electron moves off the x-axis. Then we're going to get its velocity when it leaves those plates. And then we're going to get the final, the speed, and then we're going to get the final velocity of the electron. Now, when the electron enters the deflection voltage, it has come from the acceleration voltage. And between the acceleration voltage and the deflection voltage, there is nothing. So the electron has the same volt, uh, velocity in the x direction that it had when it left the acceleration voltage. So that initial velocity in the x direction, when it comes through here, is going to be the same as the velocity, the final velocity, when it left the acceleration voltage. That's 8.39 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. Now it's moving in the x direction. It's not moving in the y direction all, at all, so the initial velocity in the y direction is 0 meters per second. Okay. When it enters the plates here, then it's going to start moving in the y direction. And we want to know what the distance of the plates is. Now, this is the same equation from before. We take the voltage is equal to the electric field times the 
distance. We want to know the distance. We rearrange. We plug the voltage in as 500, which I gave you. I gave you the, the, uh, the um, field strength. You can see the voltage is canceled. We're left with distance. And the distance between the plates is 8 centimeters. The next thing is the acceleration. We want the acceleration in the y direction. We're going to get this from Newton's second law, where the acceleration equals the force times the mass. Now, what is the force? Well, that comes from our definition of the electric field, which is the force per unit of charge. We solved that for the force, as we did before. You get Q times E, the charge times the electric field strength. And you can plug that into this equation, because well, then we'll know everything. We get the acceleration in the y direction is Q, which is the charge on the electron, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 Coulomb times the electric field strength, which is 6,250 volts per meter, divided by the mass. That's the mass of the electron. If you don't know that, you can look it up. And then you get the acceleration in the y direction is 1.1 times 10 to the 15 meters per second squared. All right, as I said, the initial velocity in the y direction is zero, but now it's going to be accelerating, so now it's going to be speeding up in the y direction. We want to know how far the electron is from the x-axis when it leaves that deflection capacitor. So the distance says how far from the x-axis. That is really the distance that it's gone in the y direction. Okay, so even though it says x-axis here, we want to know how far it's gone from the x-axis. If that's the distance in the y direction, we can use this kinematic equation, which will tell us that the distance is the initial velocity times time. Now, the initial velocity in the y direction is zero, so this term is zero, so we can simplify that to look like that, and we get that the change in the position in the y direction is 1 half at squared. Now, we can't use it like this, just like that, because we don't know how f the time it takes to go in the y direction. But we can calculate the, time, the velocity and the time it takes to go in the x direction. So the time in the x is the distance in the x. Now, I gave you the distance in the x, and I, we know the velocity from when it left the acceleration voltage. Okay, so we can use this principle, the time in the x is equal to the, d, the, the distance in the x divided by the velocity in the x. And we take those values and we get the time it takes to go in the x is 5.96 times 10 to the minus 9 seconds. Now you have to remember for this type of problem when it has this parabolic motion that the time in the y is equal to the time in the x. Because when it moves from here to here, it's moving in the x and the y direction. And the time it takes to do both of those things is the same. So we can calculate the time in the x. And then we know that the time in the y is equal to the time in the x. And now we can go back to this equation because now we know the acceleration in the y direction. We calculated the time in the x, but we know the time in the x and the time in the y are the same. So we can use this time in here to figure out how far it's gone in the y direction. We've got to remember to square the time. You get the distance that it goes is just about 1.95 centimeters. Okay? So it moves off of the x-axis 1.95 centimeters. Now we want to know the speed when it leaves. Now we can get that again from this kinematic equation. The initial velocity in the y direction was zero, so now we can simplify again. We get the final velocity in the y is equal to the square root of 2 times a times the distance. And we just calculated the distance, and that is 2 times the acceleration in the y times the distance, which was just about 2 centimeters, which is 0 0.019 meters. Take the square root of that. And you get that the final velocity in the y direction is 6.55 times 10 to 6 meters per second. So we know the velocity in the x. We know the velocity. This is the velocity in the y. So now we can calculate the actual resultant velocity. Okay? The, its overall speed and its overall direction. Now we have the electron, and it's right here now. This electron is right here. It has some velocity in the x direction. We know that from the acceleration voltage. It has some velocity in the y direction. That's the final velocity in the y direction. Okay? We just calculated that. Now, you can see we have a nice right triangle. I can move that velocity over there, that vector over there. This is the resultant velocity, and this is the angle it makes with the x-axis. And we're going to calculate this voltage, excuse the voltage, this velocity, this resultant velocity, and this angle alpha using this equation first because we have... A Pythagorean theorem here because this is a right triangle, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem. 
the velocity squared, the resultant velocity is equal to this velocity squared plus this velocity squared. So we can solve that equation using the Pythagorean theorem, and we get that the resultant velocity, the sum of this vector and this vector, the sum of this velocity and this velocity is 1.06 times 10 to 7 meters per second. That's the velocity. Not the velocity in the x and the velocity in the y, but the resultant velocity. Now we want to know the angle. And the angle, we're going to use the tangent. Because we know the tangent is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Which means the tangent is equal to the velocity in the y, because this is the opposite side, this is the adjacent side, this is arctangent. And we can plug those values in. This is the uh, velocity we calculated earlier in this section for the y. This is the velocity from the x. Remember, that doesn't change. And we get that the angle is 35 degrees. So this angle that it makes with the x-axis is 35 degrees, and it's going with that velocity that we calculated in the previous slide. Okay? Now, we're basically done, but let's just make sure we understand in section 3 here there's no forces in the x. There's no forces in the y. So there's nothing really going on except it continues in a straight line. There's nothing really to calculate. There's no, the angle doesn't change. The velocity doesn't change. It just moves along like that. Okay? So there you go. That was a full assessment of that problem. We started with an introduction and did like a qualitative discussion about how it moves. Then we did all of those calculations for the first part, then for section two, and then we talked about quickly here section three. Okay? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found the video did. Helpful. If you did, please do all of those things that you should do. Support our channel and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Leave us a nice uh, positive comment. Share this video. Please subscribe and support our channel. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next video.